few months back I did a video about this uh, mini chiro bar generator and uh, for the most part it functions but it's got a little bit of a problem with it and find out that problem is a loose capacitor inside it so we're going to be taking a look inside again as I attempt to fix it And all you have to do is undo these screws, and these screws, and these screws on the side, and these screws on this side, and that's it. The chassis slides right out. But to get the circuit board out is going to be a little bit more complicated. Looks like I'll have to undo these knobs unless I want to unsolder everything. Got some pretty interesting looking circuitry inside here. Especially this little, I think like 12 leg thing right here. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but well, I guess we'll find out from some of these people online. And there's an IC right there. It's an RCA IC. I can see the numbers on it. And what's what's the issue is, is this right here, see where this part's loose? That probably shouldn't be. They should be really tight like these here. So as I was testing it earlier I tapped it and Made things change a little bit, which is probably what's. Not, this is probably all what's wrong right here. Just some loose, loose connections right here. Loose solder probably. I'll give you a good tour of the inside for a second here. Then I got to put the camera back on charge as I figure out a way to get the knobs off. As I'm just about low, really low on charge, I gotta find out something that'll get these screws out. I don't know. I don't know if I can find anything or not, but we'll see. Okay, here we are apart, and uh, had a little misfortune, as you can probably see with the knob shaft right there. It pulled out. Well. I don't think it's detrimental, so we'll see. We'll see what happens when I try to work on that capacitor or afterward. I mean, because uh, this knob it still seems to be turning the control when I stick it in the hole. So, well, what's happened with the capacitor here is that you can. I believe you can kind of see it right there. Just a loose solder joint. It's cracked. Can't really get them no closer, but let's try zooming in. And there we go. So that gives you an idea of what happened there. It just happened on both sides of this one. I guess it was bumped or something at one time. I'm going to take another break from camera work and break out the old soldering iron and, or soldering gun, I mean, and see if we can get that going again. Tighten, get that part tightened up. All right, uh, I don't, probably don't do the best soldering job on this stuff, but as you can see, no more wiggling when I wiggle that part so I'm going to put it back together and maybe we'll get some 4.5 volts from somewhere and be in business hopefully alright I disassembled some of this off camera so 
I'm going to reassemble it a little bit on, on camera so maybe you can get an idea of what to do on the disassembly part. You just have to do it in reverse more or less. I'm just going to put that cover out of the way for a moment. And of course it's sitting on level because one of the foots is broken off more or less. Let's see. There ain't really anything I could do about that, but we'll see what we can do here. Just insert screw. It's all flathead screws on these. This model at least. And we got one at every corner of the circuit board down the side right there. And there's probably an easier way of putting these screws in, but oh well. Well, might try this. I don't know if it'll help get them started or not. <laughs> This wire stripper thing is spring loaded, which kind of works against me, but when you're doing stuff like this, these are quite awesome, to be honest with you. you got wire strippers, cutters, and pliers on the ends. Put the uh, face plate back on and screw the controls in. They're held on by the same screws. The con control is held on by the same nuts that hold the face plate down more or less. <laughs> Let's see. lucky you'll be able to get that screw out of that shaft right there when you're taking out these knobs instead of accidentally breaking it like I did Took it off camera to get started, kind of, <laughs> but I believe you're getting the idea, probably. I 
And before I forget, a little trick I pulled. I don't know if you can see in there too well, but uh, I took a I took a permanent marker and marked the top of these controls, so I knew where the top was and I marked the inside of this middle piece here, so they'll match up a little bit. Here's what I did to more or less get the four and a half volts that I needed to operate the generator. I just stuck some wires in at the end of each of the batteries right there at the ends. This end with the spring is the negative and that end with the button on the top of the battery is uh, the positive. And I'm just running through some clip leads, but and has some long jumpers that I made, which are about, uh, I believe, honest to goodness, about two or three feet long. Made this, uh, made them out of some Christmas light sets, and just uh, clipped them on down in here, where the wiring is for the special type of battery that this needs so sooner or later I think I'll look at a permanent solution to to uh, make this uh, adaptable to more common batteries like these here are the controls that I will be adjusting in the next little while Alright, so we're ready for the test of the RCA Mini Pro Bar Generator. Power Bar, however you say that. Still not sure how that's said. And there's on. That's the blank raster setting. I don't know if it's perfect or not, but it could be that little TV too after that. At least we're getting something. <laughs> Very strange looking though. There's some color. And the control I broke does seem to be still having some effect, so. Some of the problem could just be a dirty control. There's a blank raster on the picture tube. It's got lines running through it. I don't see those lines in the viewfinder of the camera. But that's not supposed to be happening. So, well, there's the crosshatch setting, which, uh, if you look at it just right, it's got, it's got lines up and down. Oh, I mean, going across the, the screen, and it looks like little springs going between the lines. This did work better than that. That setting is the dots, which you can see some dots, but they're mixed with lines. <laughs> and there's the colored bar setting as it's supposed to be, but it's not color bars, it's color splotches more or less.
So at least we know it's generating the signal. But I don't know what happened to it. Because <laughs> it was working better than this before I reattached that capacitor. Tapping on that capacitor. It's also got some adjustments on the back, so maybe we can tweak them. There's something right there. That could just be what happened. Yeah, that's what happened. I just tweaked the uh, horizontal adjustment on the back of the generator and the more I tweak it the better it looked for a little while so now I just rolled back on that adjustment I don't know what this one particular adjustment is but it's labeled stab <laughs> stability more or less Unfortunately, all I can see is just just a white screen on the computer on the uh, camera, but it's looking pretty good right now on the CRT in that mode. Okay, let's go on to some other settings. Right now, this was this is the cross hat crosshatch. There's the dots. That's working good. There's the color bars. That's pretty good looking so far. And of course that control got a little bit messed up so it's having some effect on it. When I press hard enough. There's some color bars, cool. So, just to retract, there's the dots, there's the cross hatch, there's the blank raster, and there is off. Here's a recording of the what displays on the screen from the mini crowbar generator. Carabor, how do you say that? It's a close-up view of the screen. But you can see the refresh line now. But that's the blank raster. That's the crosshatch. I don't know if there's capacitors failing in this box or capacitors failing in that TV, maybe a combination of such, but and of course you notice a little bit of a zigzag right through there. There's the dots, which looks pretty good to me. There's the color bar, which I just can. The box kind of slipped out of my hand just then.
course that's the control that I messed up so I'm going to be on the lookout for another one. But you can see I'm getting some color bars out of it. Here's some effect that the uh, controls on the back of the unit have. This is the vertical control. As you can see it's making the bars more jumpy. Advance it, and when I roll backwards, it's they tempt, they more or less jump into place after a after a little while, which is about the center of control, which is good stability. And stability control advanced. And there it is, round about halfway, and. There it is, advanced the other direction. And turned all the way down, more or less, actually. It's something when I turn all the way down, it seems to me like the, there's more lines that appear on the screen. And the horizontal. which was out of out just then causing this number to happen and the other position was advanced all the way clockwise this is counterclockwise as you can hear the TV's not liking that too much So we're about halfway, that's on every control, that's that's really good. And there's a little resistor in there, it's labeled R40, so you can adjust that too. Which, uh, if you adjust it clockwise, it... Uh, makes the picture whiten out more or less <laughs> and the darker and more defined it gets when you go the other direction which if you go too far off this is what happens <laughs> Now hopefully I can find a replacement for the chroma control.